G'day and welcome to the 56th episode of the Destiny Down Under podcast. This week, Milan shares some news, we talk about the plus thing, but most importantly, we dive right into the State of Destiny 2 release and all of the stuff that's coming our way in the near future. Cheers. G'day and welcome to the 56th episode of the Destiny Down Under podcast. I am Log Power Slave, and as always, I am joined by my trusty cohorts, Mylan Games and Real Time Sloth. How are you, Matt? What's been going on? Hello, hello. Uh, good, 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 bad, big decisions, big announcements. All right, news well, to come. Goods. We'll get to that in a minute. It's, it's, a, it's a big on. one. We'll go straight into that. Slothy, you've managed to stave off the rats for another week. The rat assassin. What's your dog's name? Ella. <laughs> I thought so. I didn't want to even call it. I'm like, it's Bear. Bear's the other one, yeah? <laughs> yes, Bear's yeah. the other one. Yeah, right. So, big news over the last couple, last few hours. Sloth's fearless dog, Ella, has killed a rat. and <laughs> Thus securing Sloth's ability to be on the podcast today. So, round of applause. How good are dogs? Thank you very much. This episode of the Destiny Den Under podcast is brought to you by Canines. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, in case... <laughs> In case you didn't know, the, the the first part of that story was the rats were in, eating the internet, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so I think they were eating the cable, Matt, not the actual information itself. <laughs> That's how it works, right? So for those who didn't connect the dots to why killing the rat allowed Sloth to be on the podcast, it involved Raddus the rat. Yeah, Raddus, P. McRaddus. What a shit. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, no one else. You want to know how gonna... big this motherfucker was, though? How big? Show like us. Dead set. It was like that. And for body. For body. Wow. And then the fucking like, tail was I, I, it again. The, dude, that's from a video game. <laughs> that's a video game, rat. <laughs> fucking Christ, dude. It was large. I know I live in bushland, but fucking Jesus. I don't know, man. I've seen you take on things that big before and not call them large, but let's move on. Matt! <laughs> All yeah. right, let's, let's, get it. let's just address a few things off the top. There's been a hell of a lot going on this week. There's been a few big decisions ba- made. There's been a few, I don't know, fucking revolutions started. <laughs> but it's been, it's been a full-on week, and it ended, I think, on a happy note with... Um, with the release of the State of Destiny 2 from Bungie, which we're going to go through later on. Uh, but first, Matt, you've got something that you want to announce, right? You've got something that you want to discuss, and I think that it's, it's probably the best that we get it straight out, and then we talk about it, right? Yeah. So, look, I pretty much woke up on Thursday, and I was like, I'm burnt out, super burnt out. And um, I'm trying to juggle streaming, YouTube videos, um, PhD, and then everything that comes to that, like Patreon, website, comments, discords, clan discord, Lords of Law discord. Um, and, it, and, and, and I felt like I was doing so many things that, and, and um, podcasts as well. Um, so... I felt like uh, I wasn't really doing any of them to my best of my ability. And, um, but all of them were great opportunities and great things. Like I love streaming. I have such a blast streaming and I want to develop that community there. My YouTube channel has been around for three years now and I've spent so much time and effort investing into that and building that and building that community. And PhD, you know, is an opportunity to further my education and, make sure that I can pay mortgages in the future. So, <laughs> like, I don't want to give any of them up, but I felt like I was going to sort of uh, pretty much reached a, a point where I wasn't really enjoying making videos because they were so rushed. It was like, all right, I've got five hours. Let's get a video done. Rather than spending a little bit more time creatively writing the scripts and making sure they're enjoyable um, and you combine that with sort of the rough time in Destiny 2 and like views are going down and all that kind of stuff. It's like, fuck, I hate, it's like the, the castle that you've built, you can sort of see crumbling and you're like, okay, I need to spend more time maintaining that. Um, and for me, Twitch was the one that had to sort of be cut from my schedule. Um, you know, three times a week at five hours, 15 hours sort of 
time streaming and I, I think that that's the well that, that's the thing I'm gonna stop doing so uh, I'm gonna make a video announcing that on the on the YouTube channel we are going to add something in on the weekends just so people can pop in and say hi at least once a week uh, but it's gonna be a lot less pressure to to be really pushing the, the streams hard and it's actually gonna be Danny's going to join me on that one too. So the streams are going to come to an end uh, so I can refocus on YouTube, I can focus on the website, which is my law website, I can refocus on Patreon. We just started the process for the comic book again for the next comic book. Uh, can refocus on Guardian Con and what needs to be organized for that and merchandise and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. That's that's the plan. I, I want to get back to the pillars of the Law Channel, which was enveloping people into the Destiny universe, helping them discover things that are interesting and getting them excited about Destiny. And I think uh, that positivity it needs my full attention in the sort of current climate. Credit where it's due, Matt. We were talking just before we went live and for you to be getting up at 5 a.m., <laughs> to stream and do, you know, put in that, the hard yards each each week and do that, man. Like, I'll take my hat off to you for even beginning to try it because if I got up at 5 a.m., there's only one thing I'd be doing and that would be murdering people, right? Like, that would be <laughs> fucking terrible. I don't know how you do it and, like, I mean, like, part of me is bummed because as much as most of your streams are through the week while I'm at work and I don't get to jump in, the Saturday morning one before this is normally when I'm like, you know, I'll come in and make a few comments and, and lurk and yeah. catch when I can. And I don't know. I mean, part, like I totally understand where you're coming from and I respect 100% your decision to sort of renew your focus and, and sort of uh, refine what you're going to do and, and cut, cut a bit of the fat out. Um, mm. So, yeah, I mean... Definitely, you know, I mean, people are still going to get their opportunity to interact with you clearly. Like, you know, you've got your plans, you've got this, you know, I mean, we're all on Twitter all the fucking time. So if there's anything you want to say to any of us, you can definitely do it there, provided it's not. Nice, yeah, well, I mean, we'll I mean that's, a, a moment, that's the thing but... for me is like, um, you know, I'm, I'm super absent from my Discord and, you know, even the YouTube comments now. And that just sort of sucks. And it's sort of as you as you get bigger on, on any platform, like, you've got this weird thing where you've got more people that want to speak with you, but you become more disconnected because your you just roles, all. yeah, your roles just increase with, with what you have to do and other, th and just like admin stuff just all around the place just to, to get things out. Um, and uh, for most of the time, what all that I was able to do is, is the content, make the content, get the content out, um, stream, and and then phd work so uh to have some of that time back to help support everything that comes around a law video and, and a youtube video and the community that comes around that i think would be really nice i agree i think it i remember well, uh, just let's go a little trip down memory lane i'm trying to remember what video of yours it was where you went i've reached the point where i can't read all of the youtube comments and I remember, yeah, I'm trying to remember, it was a, oh, I'm pretty sure it was a, it was definitely Hive, one of the Hive hierarchy. And I, and I remember going like, this dude is genuinely bummed that he cannot read every single YouTube comment. Because it was like this, just like two minutes of just apologizing for it. But I guess like as time's gone on and it's become like, like that is the reality, you know, like that is, it's, it's fucking hard. I mean, mm. I, I, I struggle to keep up with my shit and I've got fuck all yeah. going on by comparison. But, but yeah. it's weird, like you can get very complacent with, with numbers and views. And I think like the bigger you, you sort of get on a platform, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, the more you start maybe considering it like a business because it has that potential. Whereas before you might just do it for a hobby. And all it is about is, is making the best content that you feel good about. Yeah. Um, but as it becomes more successful, you're like, oh, maybe this could be a career. So when you start trending it like that, you start playing to the YouTube algorithm or I've got to upload X amount of videos per week. They've got to be, you know, really sexy topics that people want to click on. And they've got to be real topical. And, and, and then what happens is you start losing some of the focus of the core principles of a channel and why people may have gone there in the first place. And so um, getting a little bit more time back to revisit why people may have come to the channel in the first place, I think will be a good thing. Sloth, were you up drinking mm. rum until 4am? Maybe. 
<laughs> Chad will dob you in, man. Chad will always dob you in. Mm -hmm. Here's Matt just drinking his tea like a good boy. <laughs> nah, dude. I, I, yeah, as I said, total respect for, for giving it your all for so long, to be honest. Like, it's a juggling that with studies. I, I can't imagine, you know, like, I mean, I'm not the most yeah. studious individual ever, but yeah. Yeah, and there's there's like there's like I think more recently there's an extreme amount of pressure on the. We just keep getting funding. Like we're like half a million dollars deep in funding, and they're like Matt, the the renewal of funding is like dependent on your results. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, but I got fucking law videos to make, man. Fuck. But I got law. I'm trying to stream. I'm trying to play video games. Do you know? So it's like this contrast. Uh, which is so funny because you know you get paid almost nothing to do the PhD, but there's, this this it's a weird scenario where there's just so much business in the background of it, and you're like this little plebeian, just um, you know doing all the work, and everything depends on you, but nothing <laughs> nothing comes back your way. <laughs> <laughs> Much like being a content creator, really, right? <laughs> you got to do everything. Yeah. Every, yeah. <laughs> Doing a PhD is like starting a YouTube channel from scratch. There we go. There we go. <laughs> You've done that successfully, so I've got no reason to doubt that you won't do the PhD just as well. There you go. Well, you know, that's that's our little bit of, oh, is it negative? Is, is it our only negative news? I don't know. What are we, do we want to talk about the plus thing? Do we want to do it? Yeah. Okay. How, how about you let let me lead this conversation <laughs> so you don't know, feel uh, so let, let me let me fill people right. in but i think right here you fill people in i'm gonna go get a beer because i feel like i'm gonna need it <laughs> i'll be right back you're cutting out a bit matt and your voice too i'm not sure what's going on um i don't know i'll be right back so log log did this log did a thing as you said he did a thing he sent a, a, a twitter message to me and sloth saying i did a thing with a link to a Twitter post. And the Twitter post was essentially um, a plus symbol being added to the Twitter handle um, to symbolize being positive about Destiny 2 and that we can be critical without being negative and we can treat people with respect whilst, you know, still, you know, having feedback about the game. And so it was, I think it was very well written. So obviously that started to trend and with that we got a lot of polar opposites we got the people that really liked the idea and the people that thought well i to be honest i think people misinterpreted it, it, it quite badly and thought that it was mm. quite a fake positivity which i guess was the other side of the coin um and there was they actually caused quite a big divide between people that were trying to remain positive about destiny 2 and people that um, I don't know. I thought maybe it was like not calling Bungie out. I'm actually not really yeah. too sure what the other side was. The, why the they were so upset. Mis I don't know. What's the word? The biggest error I think people made in interpreting what it was about was the fact that they jumped to the assumption that it was about blind optimism. And I think sure. like in hindsight, I probably could have worded the original tweet better, but the reason I like, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it because it was I had a, I had a, just a really shitty internet argument with a dude the night before that and I woke up the next morning and there was like people liking the comments that I made and I'm like oh that looks really fucking negative like that's just shitty and it's not the person I want to be so I thought well I'm going to put a fucking plus in front of my name so that every time I write anything I have to see that and then <laughs> If, if it isn't in line with that, then I'll fucking take it down and find a better way to convey what I'm saying, like, without being a dick about it. Mm. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll, like, I'll put it out there and it, I don't know, it, it spread like fucking wildfire. Like, I was, I, I put it out while I was at work and I went to the morning meeting and I come back and my phone was like... Oh my phone God. Melted. And Twitter Your phone itself melted is, to the table. <laughs> Twitter itself is going like, do you need to set up filters? And I'm like, fucking oath, I do. <laughs> but, um, Dude, I've never got that. What are the, what happens with the filter? It just comes out. <laughs> it's like a prompt. Uh, you can like drop people, like drop like whether or not people like something out, or you know, you can yeah, it's yeah, okay. the notifications. You, yeah, so you can just limit the notifications you get. But I think 
initially, like, the first fucking day of it, like, up to that night, it was really good. Like, people were just... I think people just saw it genuinely for what it was. And it was just that, you know, like... I think people kind of went, look, I am positive about Destiny. I don't... Positive people tend to not... You know, this squeaky wheel gets the oil right. Like, the, the, the negative... The more negative or aggressive people are, the louder their voice seems. Where the positive people tend to, you know, they may be more inclined to be shrinking violets. They may be more inclined just to be there as as more. They're probably more passive people, you know. Like so, having something that you can put in your name yeah. without having to go and fucking call people out and convey your opinion is, I guess, in hindsight, a pretty attractive thing. It's like, okay, look, I am here. I'm interested in destiny. I care enough to put this thing in my name. And I want to have positive discussions around, you know, like it was never about not being critical. Fuck. I mean, if you've listened to this podcast for more than yeah, a minute. Yeah, I mean, people, <laughs> people that criticize it obviously have never seen this podcast. Yeah, because we are <laughs> not afraid to put the slipper in where we need to, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. And then sort of from there, it, there was a few streamers, a few quite large streamers started to... For want of a better term, Take shit on notice. it, and I think I think um, they. I mean, you you got to remember if if you're in their position, and this is maybe me being cynical and saying that you know they're, they're hedging their bets a little bit, but half of their audience fucking hated that, so they can't go out and adopt something like that without the fear of alienating half their audience, right? Especially when we're talking about dudes that are in the PvP part of the community, because I think that they're a little bit more inclined to be angry. <laughs> You know, like the the audience, like anyone who's really in that that fucking hardcore PvP guy like mindset, you know, and and they've got every right to be angry. They've you know they've lost so much of their you know oh, what they had everything. in Destiny One, right? Like yeah. you no know, customs, all that sort of stuff. But sort of going on from that, <coughs> it did get pretty fucking pretty woolly. Like overnight, I woke up and there was some pretty some pretty savage shit in my in my <laughs> fucking Twitter feed. So. I don't know. I caught my I caught my licks for it. I had a few really fucking good discussions with people about things. I did my absolute best to even when people were uh, not particularly nice to to just try and say, look, I understand where you're coming from. I understand why you're so emotional about it. All I'm saying is to, you know, be be angry. That's fine, but be constructive and listen to each other. Like, not I don't know. Mm. I mean, the irony of all of this is like. <laughs> The fact that I could start something like this just goes to show that it was there ready to fucking happen anyway. It's not like I'm oh, some mate. fucking paragon there was, of wisdom. There was <laughs> there was a barn full of hay and you just fucking chucked a match into it. Yeah. That and... With a couple of fire lighters. That and like, it wasn't... It was literally an effort on by myself for myself to stop being angry. <laughs> well, that... I actually didn't know that. That's really interesting yeah. to know that. You did that because you saw yourself typing Twitter messages, which you felt like wasn't positive or like wasn't good for the community. So you're like, yeah. you know what, this will be like, and that's exactly what it did. This is this will be like a reminder. Yeah, yeah. And you I, know, I, mean, I, I spoke to uh, Swain from Community, uh, the Crucible Radio, and he's sort of done the sort of same thing. Like the the whole like yeah i'm gonna, like he's still got it there now i think and it's just that look if if what i write to someone isn't up to scratch then i i will rethink and find a better way to say it and i mean i'm not going to shit on people who are angry about the game you've got every reason to be angry about the game just don't be an asshole to people that's all it's about and the whole yeah, the fact yeah. that it the, the probably the thing that pained me the most is it's something that I legitimately started to try and like be a better part of the community it then became this thing that everyone's like you divide in the community I'm like fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't fucking win oh my god <laughs> but like I listen, do understand where they're listen. coming and sorry Slothy you, you've been alarming no uh, <laughs> I, I, I yes I totally agree with you I do see where you're coming from but um we're 30 minutes into this podcast and we're still pulling each other's dicks about being positive in the community. So let's go forward with what's going forward with the uh, state of destiny and uh, go from there. So the blog came I'm really out half an hour in. Yep, shit, right. Thursday yeah, fair enough. Morning. Um, the blog came in on Thursday morning. No, yes, Thursday morning, wasn't it, Matt? Yes. Yeah, no, it was Wednesday on morning. It was on stream. It was on. It was, it was, on, right. so it was on stream. Yeah, Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday night, US. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So uh, the, the the blog came out, which uh, had some very interesting points about what's where the game is going to um, going to be uh, going over the coming months, which is which is kind of good to see uh, some sort of a roadmap. Whether it comes uh, comes to fruition or not, it's it's good to see. It's good to see to to have a good to have plans and all that sort of thing. But thus, I digress. So the future of Destiny 2, as we have a new weapon tier, we have Masterworks weapon tier, um, which uh, from what I can pull from the, uh, what what we can, or the three of us can garner from the uh, the blog is, uh, which will feature stat trackers, random re-rollable stat bonuses, unique item tooltips, and item details screen. See this in December update details, blah, 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 blah. And um, it's... Uh, I kind of like that. I kind of like the fact that it's not... Uh, I saw a lot of people on Twitter going, oh, my God, random rolls of weapons are back. It might not be. It's no, small, it's, it so, is to a smaller degree, right? It's a, to, 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 to an extent. So to, to an extent. Because I, I got confused with this mm-hmm. at first as well, and then I listened yep. to another summary um, by Dado, which... Probably made it. I don't know some of some of the language used in the post. Unless you like read a lot of like previous discussions, they might go over your head. So what it says: rerollable exactly. stat bonuses. So stats being what the impact, the range. They're the stats, right? Yeah. On the yep. weapon. Yeah. So yep. they're not perks. Perks are like you know firefly and that kind of. Shit. These are stat yeah, yeah, yeah. bonuses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which is we've never have we had. Well, we we've, don't, had, we, we've had perks that we, affect them. But we've not, had yes. perks that affect the stats. I, I can see where people are getting bonuses. confused. Yeah, I can see where people are getting confused. They're like, they're like you know, like it, it seems like a random roll, but I don't think it's going to be a random roll. I don't think Bungie are going to revert the game that far. I, oh, I, I, don't I don't think know. they're going to change it. No, it says but, random. It says random re-rollable in the, I, in the dude, post. Trust me, I think after listening to news on Crucible Radio last week and the week before that, they did an amazing, mm. like, fucking four-hour conversation. Seriously, go and check it out if you haven't because it'll open your eyes to a lot of the way they approach creating weapons. There are The way Destiny 2 works by comparison to Destiny 1 is, like, all the guns are designed individually, so there are specific perks that if you put them on a gun would just make that gun fucking ridiculous, Right. right? Like, mm. broken, ridiculous. Like, admittedly, now there mm. is still metas and all that sort of stuff and that. But there has been a hell of a lot more forethought put into a, into the guns. And we do, we, we're we not finding ourselves in these situations like the fucking... What was the original Iron Banner shotgun? Fellwinter's Lie. Like, it was Fell just... The range lie, yeah. was just fucked. If you got the right roll in it, it was ridiculous. You know, there's less of that going on. So I can understand where they're coming from with that. And it would surprise me greatly to see them completely roll back on that. Here you are. Like, it's going to be controlled in some way. Like, the, well, maybe, says, says, maybe you can randomly says, get a perk, but the perks are going to be fucking pretty well defined, right? Like, they're not going to be game-breaking fucking, oh, you get a 100% accuracy and no recoil on the fucking Uriel's gift. Like, just it's a laser. Like, it's not going to happen. It's it's going to have yeah, to be balanced well, and checked it at says, some point. It says, add weapon stat bonuses that are selected randomly from a small pool and are re-rollable. So I think yeah. the small boy, it's, it's going to be very controlled. Yeah. Yes. It's like, do you do you remember do you remember when we first got some news about it and it was like, we have now have more control about over weapon archetypes. Yep. Yeah. You, do you remember that? If they went back to a random roll, and I mean a complete random roll, just like Destiny One, they wouldn't have that control anymore. To a degree, they wouldn't have that control anymore, and that's 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 my take. It like it, obviously, oh, yeah. like you can you can look at it and go, random re-rollable stat bonuses. Holy shit, this is this is it. This is it. Blah 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 blah. But no, it, I don't think it's coming back. If you if you have anything, if you have a reason to think otherwise outside of what we've stated um, today, please let us know in the comments below on YouTube or in the Twitch chat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because we'd like to we'd like to see some oh, more we're all details in it together about it. trying to muddle out the details, right? But exactly. yeah, I, I think you're on the money there, Sloth. I think like mm. for them, if they just opened a whole pool of random stats that could be on any kind of gun, right? I, I think they've gone through and probably gone. 
just I, I mean I'm I don't know this so I'm just having a punt but they will be going through looking at each gun and what it does incredibly well and then trying to like the perks will be things that while they help that won't make like for example Uriel's gift like it's already a fucking absolute hose like the range on it is great so you couldn't go or oh, increase to range because you'd have an auto rifle that you could literally use its scout rifle distance or yeah, you couldn't you know, take like, the recoil what could you out of put it on, what could you put on on uriel's gift that wouldn't make it the top pick do you yeah. know it? It's such a high performer in a lot of categories. Yeah. It's, it's, a, same, it's a same with Last Hope. I'm like, what do you put on that? <laughs> it's not great at range. You give that increased range, it's going to be fucking ugly. But having said that, know. there are probably guns out there right now that aren't the cream of the crop that will get the ability to get these rolls on them and will really fucking shine. Like that, yeah. the, you know, the the other part of the discussion they had on Crucible Radio, and I'm sorry that I just keep stealing their fucking podcast, but it was great. Like, I'll steal your content and talk about it here. I don't give a fuck. But um, was that, like, the, the there's so many guns that they, during beta testing, they were like, people are going to love this gun. And it's, like, it's not panned out that way. And they're like, it's there. Like, they're, they're sort of, they're calling them, like, the sleeper guns of Destiny, right? The ones that are really fucking good, but the community hasn't quite twigged onto yet. Like, play of the you game the over the last two weeks, since they were talking about it, like, I've picked it up and had a go at it, and, you know, when you're using it like a spam fire machine, which it is, you're like, okay, it is it is a fucking good gun. So, I think there's a lot to, there's a lot to come out in the wash with this, so to speak. There'll be a lot of guns that you probably didn't give a fuck about, that you will start to give a fuck about, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the other, anyway. the other thing to mention on the masterworks is it generate. I think it's always going to have this generate orbs for you and your allies on multi kills. Mm. That's cool. And so I don't know if that's PvP or if it's PVE, but if it's PVE as well, be no, huge. it can't be PVE. That'll be way too many orbs. I think they'll have to scale it, right? Like if you kill two thrall, you get a fucking orb. Holy shit! Sign but you know up. what I'm thinking. But you know what? You know what I'm thinking. You know how much fun strike missions would be if, if you, you could just chain super. supers like uh, more often. That would be so. Oh man, that that would actually. I would. I would much prefer to do strikes and like run through them with just rolling supers than. Yeah, it'd be like you know, mayhem strikes, right? Events. <laughs> like nearly mayhem already, strikes. Yeah. yeah, there's already mayhem strikes. What are you talking about? Daybreak, daybreak strikes. It's been. It was last week's night. Oh mate. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah right. On. But anyway, regardless. Anyway, yeah. moving on because there's a lot of things to get through today. Um, improved vendor rewards. So basically, from what I read of it, buying certain gear using your legendary shards from whichever um, vendor that you want. So if you want to get the bucket hat and a whole bunch of guns from Earth, do that. If you want to get the crucible stuff, do that. If you want to get uh, not Venus, fucking uh, to Titan stuff. Do that. So that's kind of um, that's that's kind of a, a good move for the economy per se. Um, see, legendary shards as as it, it is the main currency, one of the two main currencies, uh, in-game currencies of the game, and there wasn't really. Um, I, dude, I, I think we can a sum use, it up by saying I think we can sum it up by saying that the economy that launched with Destiny 2 was pretty out of whack. Right? Like mm. when have you gone to go to Zer and gone or A, Zer would need to have something that you didn't already fucking have and he keeps seems to keep just having <laughs> the most common as like have June marches, you fuck. Like sit like lift. But you you never find yourself in a position where you get to zero and you're like shit. I need to go and get myself more legendary marks because you've got fucking four hundred of them sitting there. Like it, it's it's been out of kilter since launch. So to see them yeah, coming and, out and incentivizing, well not incentivizing, but finding ways for you to effectively use them and get things that you want with them and make them a currency that you give a shit about is mm. it was always going to happen. And I think even when they at Gamescom they were talking about. You know, the Iron Banner system, the the way they're going to change the token system, that you can buy things from vendors, 
Like they will have an actual, you know, like sh- uh, sorry, salad bin. We'll have a fucking specific loadout. You can go and buy things that you want. I think it's definitely going to be vastly improved with respect to removing the shitty part of the grind, right? Like that horrible mm. iron banner grind that exists now. I think the new grind will be yeah, yeah. if people decide they want masterwork fucking versions of guns that they have, like they will be going out and chasing that rather than just, I want the fucking gun to begin with, right? I'm going to be, like, I'm going to be chasing the masterworks thing. Dude, I'm gonna, I am. If there's a gun you love, you want the masterwork version, right? <laughs> like, well, yeah. I'm just, I'm going to do it anyway because, you know, like that actually gives me a reason to go, oh shit. I need to go out there and farm that particular area to do it. Like, I come, I have a background of grinding games. I like grinding games. Let's fucking grind. You know, it's not not that not not that fucking difficult. And uh, last but not least, in the uh, the new systems and rewards part, we have added uh, adding (laughs) armor. Oh, don't ever do that again. I have to look at that. Uh, adding armor, armor ornaments that grant visual permutations of armor as players complete specific challenges. Jesus, that was rough to get out. I should not drink rum till four in the morning. Um, <laughs> what? And that's, that's like good. reading that sentence was what told you that? <laughs> I, I think it's going to be nice to see some variation. Like, I remember in Destiny 1 when you go into the tower and you would look like you would notice certain guns like oh wow they got some cool armor on oh, they yeah. got some cool things going on like where did they get that from and i don't feel like i've ever had that feeling in destiny 2 and i guess maybe having these armor sets a bit easier to to get and having more ornaments and that kind of thing can really bring back some of the yeah there's it's you like know, there's fantasy when you go into a tower like yeah, it's, this it's like there's no pinnacle gear. Like remember early, early Destiny One when you used to see someone just wearing chatter white, and you used to go, "Oh, they've mm. done the raid." <laughs> like, mm. oh, well, mm. oh, okay. Well, like you know, like the first few weeks when like we were, I was fucking admittedly terrible at Destiny and had no idea like how it even approached. What do you the mean raid. the first two weeks? That's the fucking last three and a half years, mate. Oh, shut up, <laughs> Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> <laughs> If you're just listening to the podcast, Sloth really does look like Zach Galifianakis. That's a hard name to say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's my take on it. That'd be cool. I think that'd be cool. Like, I I never put any emphasis into, like, the way my Guardian looked. But I think if I can see the sets, I think I probably will, like, grind to purchase a certain set of gear with certain ornaments to make the Guardian look in a certain way. I actually probably will do that. The other thing I might jump forward to, and and we've sort of, the way we've set this up is so that we've got the overview of everything that's coming and then we can get into the nitty gritty of like when the actual parts will be released because that was, you know, it was a, there was so much, like, as I, I said the tweet earlier, there is literally so much fucking information to try and cover that like there is going to be more hours of podcasting done across the Destiny community this week than there will <laughs> ever be done ever again, right? Like, it is huge. But like the, just the list of... um all of the ornaments, right? That that got me excited, mm. okay? Because, like, when you think back to Destiny 1 and we had, oh, Iron Banner gear has ornaments. There was, you know, like, Raid gear has ornaments. Nah, now it's, like, the fucking Crucible, Vanguard, Trials gear, Iron Banner, each of the factions. Like, there is a serious amount of gear. I mean, it's yet to be seen how different these, like, ornaments really make the gear look. But it's just adding a huge layer of variation to the way players can present themselves in game. And being the fashion game that it is first and foremost, it's pretty important to people, I think, right? Like, everyone invests a little bit in their character. I mean, except Spoonie. He just puts the worst shaders on everything he can because that's the way he is. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, yeah, I think I think it's great with the, with the ornaments. I'm looking for it. The, the, this is what Dado said, right? And I think this hit the nail on the head too. There's only a certain level of excitement that you can have for D2 going back to the way D1 was. Yeah, you're right. Do you know, like, yeah, we got ornaments. Wait, we got ornaments 
back. <laughs> they were already there. Yeah. 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 Do you know? Like that is a and, cynical and way of looking at it, but I can totally respect it. And I'm part of yeah. like now that you've said it, I'm like, wow, it's it's really just getting your old stuff back again. <laughs> Do you know? And uh, I I think a lot of the anger towards D two probably comes from that. We had so much at the end of D one. And then so much of it was cut back. And, of course, everyone got outraged. And lo and behold, <laughs> they just reintroducing the stuff we had in D1. So I think it comes back to the, like, we wanted to hit the ground running in D2 and, like, start off with every, all those features that we loved in D1 and then get new and exciting features that we have never seen before. But at this stage, we're still sort of – the foundation was reset and they realized that they sort of goofed up the foundation. They had to put a whole bunch of it up again and then reset it again. <laughs> and we're sort of getting to baseline. That's what we're getting. We're getting close. Yeah, we're getting to back to that. I don't know. I mean, admittedly, we never had masterworks. There are there are things coming and, and probably the bigger parts of that we'll get to in a sec. But um, So better incentives for those who complete prestige activities. This is the thing that Thank I really, I really feel like they missed big time, right? Like to to have like you do the hardest shit in the game. You want to have something you can wear on your arm to s- separate you from the peasants who can't do it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need it. It's a, it's a you know that's why people do it. Not I, lo- that- I love. <laughs> I, lo- I love how you've just gone and referenced at uh, seventy percent of the Destiny universe as peasants. Must you know, be I haven't done the fucking hard be. mode raid either. I'm listen, talking about myself listen, too. You know what? You know what? You've done fucking three raids, log. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three completions, and you did not. Oh. I'm talking about just myself. Like, I've not done that fucking prestige. Just talk jack about shit. the prestige shit. You Don't you talk down about plebeians? <laughs> they are my fucking people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant peasants and plebeians are where I belong, and I don't want to even be anywhere else unless Sassy carries me. That's we'll put it that way. So basically, every other time, then yes. Um, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better awards and replay value for strikes, adventures, and lost sectors. I think I've got to be a little bit careful with that. Not the strikes part, but the lost sectors, right? Like, Lost Sectors are fucking two minutes of activity. If they make the rewards for them even remotely better and they don't mm. drastically improve the rewards for strikes, why the fuck are you going to do strikes, bro? Like, they've got to fix strikes. That's what this game has been missing, in my opinion. The ability to really dive into strikes and get get paid, right? Yeah, it's such a hard, like... I was... If you, if you go back and watch... Uh, previous podcast Lost Sectors was one of the things I was most excited about yeah. because I distinctly remember playing the Destiny beta and going into the Hellmouth and exploring for hours the maze down there and hoping that some of those doors would open up and open to other caverns and pathways and I think a lot of people hoped it would have this expansive World of Warcraft like area that you could just go and explore. And Lost Sectors seem like they're trying to do that, but it never, I don't never feel like it has that exploration that you would want from a, you know, open world, so to speak. You know, you know what and, I think, like, if that, like, this is just me spitballing, and I, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, the thing with Lost Sectors that makes them all the same is that it's always go in, find, kill the big boss, whatever. If they'd taken a step back from that and some of them had no enemies in them at all and were straight up puzzles or straight up really difficult platforming sections where you had to get to a place to get the chest rather than just go in, kill the enemies, pick up the chest, run out, I think it would have added a level of variety and interest in it that you know, like probably there would have, it would have led to people farming particular ones once they worked it out and all that sort of shit. But I mean, they're doing that now anyway. So I just think that the, the variety isn't there. If they're meant to be these like sort of side notes to the universe of, and like little places of interest to go and explore, they're really just caves with baddies in them. Yeah. <laughs> or train stations or it's, holes in the ground. 
Uh, the, I don't the, know. The, the thing with the, the lost sectors and the exploration in the game is, like, as as American Hooligan in the Twitch chat has said, like, it's it's all revealed to you. There's there's not really any mystery of, like, Matt and I oh, could be playing, or the three of us, the three of us could be playing, and we're 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 going through and all that sort of thing. And I've gone this way, Log's gone this way, and Matt's gone this way. And Matt goes, oh shit, I found a cave. Oh shit, there's a fucking vex puzzle in here. Like it, it's a it's a an opportunity missed, unfortunately. Um, to discover, to discover yeah, to and discover. explore. Yeah. Exactly, and like if you if you added that with a codex, I, I know I'm sort of branching off to different territory here, but if you added that with a codex um, of what you find, audio clippings, all that sort of thing, mate, all over it. That a lot of people would have been would have been fucking all over that. Yeah, you, you know, we've got this explore. thing that can bring us back to life that in the palm of their hand. You reckon he can fucking um, scan something and record it? No. <laughs> Sloth. Sloth. You better... Come on, mate. Maybe maybe the fucking Alexa one can do that, right? <laughs> you seen that shit? Oh <laughs> my god, is that is that in the notes? I only briefly saw no, that. It's, but it's that not. That but, uh, should be in our notes. It is now. We're talking about it right now. I want a fucking ghost I can talk to in my house because I okay, just wanna, wait. I want to take it to work. <laughs> so tell me how this this is like an Alexa shaped as ghost, no, and like an you're playing death. No, no, it's just just an Alexa, normal Alexa with a ghost. Overlay, Cover. I guess you could. The, okay, yeah. it's got a no, no, no. It's it's no, no, no. It's a normal Alexa. Physically, it's a normal Alexa. Yeah. It's just got the ghost voice programmed into it. Yeah, and, and it, it comes with, it comes Australia. with like a speaker shaped like a ghost. Yeah, oh, and so, it so okay. the actual the device is still the, the device. Speakers. Okay, because yes. I just remember seeing the the speakers shaped like the ghost. Okay. And you're playing Destiny, and you're just like, "Yo, Alexa, transfer my." Uh, that, that is that is my <laughs> understanding of it. <laughs> that is my understanding of it. But there's the thing is like, oh, you can use it to change loadouts and all, and all that sort of stuff. Like whenever they say loadouts, it confuses me because I think of like loadouts in the grand scheme of things, like you know, like a dim loadout, like his. You know, you can set up an actual loadout where it changes your whole gun, where I think they just mean that you could talk to it and go, can you please put my Uriel's gift on because I'm a scrub, Alexa, ghost? No, 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 no. There, there, there was videos of, like, put my Crucible loadout on and they had preset all well, the why guns. Why is that not in the armor. fucking game? Like, why can't we just save loadouts? <laughs> Come on. Because then, how would, because then how would we sell you, Alexa, if we didn't have... Do you know, this is a thing, like, there was a conversation between CEOs and Activision and, like, do you know what? Let's not put that feature in because we can sell Alexa like that. Like, it's, it's like, intentionally creating a gap for a product to fill. Welcome to Business 101. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, anyway. Like, oh, let's not. Let's, yeah, first, we've got so much first, good firstly, shit to talk about. Let's not talk yeah, about yeah, yeah, corporate first, greed, first, right? First, first, <laughs> firstly and foremostly, Alexa doesn't work in Australia. So if you're in Australia, that doesn't work. It may come soon, but it doesn't work. So if you're an Australian and you want to pre-order it or whatever, whatever. Don't do just it. Be known. Don't, it, just it don't. doesn't work. No, no, no. If you, you do what you do, you buy what you buy. If you're interested in Alexa or midget porn, you go and do your thing. <laughs> That you know, escalated like, quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you that Alexa does not work in Australia or the or New Zealand to the best of my best is of it, my knowledge. Is so, that because of the accent? No, no, no. Like it, Amazon just isn't available here. Ah, oh. yeah. Am, Amazon. Yeah, it's ah uh, bloody hell, Alexa changes my crucible gear. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please, please repeat the things? Please put out on me flame and galah load out. Cheers, darling. <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah, bloody joke. <laughs> Listen, not right. everyone's not everyone's a fucking walking meme like Chucky. Come on, Jesus. Oh, dude, I love that dude. Anyway, let's move on. I could get into talk about Chucky for forever. <laughs> what, what's next on get our even. list, right? <laughs> Holy shit, where are we up to? So yeah, um. The rewards, adventure philosophy. Look, we're not going to get it until we see what the rewards and for these activities really are. It is what it is. Like, hopefully two, they're improved. Two blues, and, two blues, and a green. Two oh. blues and a token. Hey, just as an <laughs> aside, two, two do you think that? Do you think Deej, like, over the last week, has been Deej in his final form? Like, he has been just 
taking ass, like not taking ass, kicking ass and taking names <laughs> all over taking Twitter. Just and talking, kicking names. talking to people. He's been an absolute fucking champion. He's been accessible. Do you think he walked off the set of that reveal thing and went, you just have fucked me. Like, I want free reign to go and be able to talk to people again because he's just been choked out. And like, yeah, it, maybe. Yeah, like you know, like I would have been pissed off at a professional level if I had been stitched up to that extent. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. But we t- we spoke about that last mate. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. They're like, he's like, you know what? Just let me loose, man. I'm a community manager. Let me manage the community. And he did. And he's been doing a fucking oh, ribbon did. job. Love you, Deej. Yeah. Right, moving on. Um, private matches for Crucible. I think, like, can you imagine the, the the relief when people read that, right? That early next year, the, the, you know, like people who are in that scene and the other thing, ranked PvP. I've seen Giggle Monster <laughs> just absolutely, like, he... I, his tweets about this, I'm excited about it because he's so fucking excited about it. Like, it was like, people said it had never happened. Fuck you! You know, like, he was just in this sort of like, yes, like, it's finally... Go- I, I don't know. I don't know if it's something, an aspect of the game that I'm particularly going to care about actually playing when it comes. I'll probably just get, like, a little bit into it and then get my ass handed to me and leave. But for those people who are on that top end of the scale, that that is what they do. I think it's great. I think... Provided there's enough depth to the system, it, it could be a really, really positive addition to the game. So the 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 critical person again is like, do you reckon this stuff was just added in regards to the backlash, or do you think it's been on the list already? Like, okay, was we are also moving ranked PvP to the top of a pro list, like, like it wasn't before. Yeah, that 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 doesn't read particularly encouragingly, but I think. A lot of the stuff that we are getting has to have been in the pipeline for it to be executed in such a short time frame. At least the stuff, any like the the stuff that they put hard dates with, has absolutely been you know in the pipeline already. Mm. And I mean, private private matches has has to have been because the, like the second that it was announced before Destiny Two came out that there was no private matches, people went, "What the fuck? What year is it?" Like. And it's been, you know, you could play Goldeneye against each other when you were fucking 10. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> anyway. Interesting. Yeah. But okay. um, Z, Z makes, a, makes a good point when they, like, if, if anyone, if anyone, um, I go, bleh, words. Um, if, uh, if the this this what he's written here comes to fruition, I'd be I'd be pretty happy. Um, I hope that private matches don't include isolate uh, does not include trials maps for a time period, so there's minimal map advantage. So if there's a private if, if you go all right, uh, fortress is a trials map this week, um, like they they take fortress out of the private map rotation. If that makes sense, to actually get people into playing, yeah, it, I, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I can see that. Mm. I can, anyway. But I mean, at the end of the day, once all of the maps are out for a like prolonged period of time, like right now, all of us know pretty much That's the lines matter. and all that sort of stuff on all of the maps for yeah. for the current maps. Maybe mm. I'd like to. I really hope that they do continue with the thing, the trend that they sat set with like Eternity, where no one played it until it was the Trials map for the first time, and that was the first place that people saw it. So that, you know, when they're introducing new Crucible maps, why not introduce it at the pinnacle of the game, right? Like, introduce it where people are going to appreciate it most, in trials, and then move on. Then it's in the general rotation Mm -hmm. after that. I thought that was a good addition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Yes. (laughs) Yes, quite, quite. Shallow and and pedantic. uh, (laughs) Yes, yes, shallow and pedantic, yes. Um, The the thing that sort of... uh, perked my ears up um, where or per, like it really perked me up when I was uh, reading the crucible stuff is that they're instituting a quitter penalty yeah dude that is yep. is like they like you, 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 the, the, there's not really much to cover off on that if you quit competitive matches ie competitive playlist ranked or trials guess what you you copper like you the first one it might just be a well, first two might be a warning. The second one, half an hour ban. Third one, hour ban. 
and so on and so on and so on because like and the four of us know and a lot of people who play pvp like iron banner and all that sort of thing as soon as you come up against a four stack or uh, as soon as you're running a four stack and someone comes up against you people just like no no i don't want to play against you guys i don't want to play they just they they literally all they do is get out reek you join another match and it's kind of frustrating but uh, it's it's good to see that that quit a penalty thing is is kind of good it's just uh, like with with Bungie sometimes they struggle with implementation so I mean we we shall see we shall see um and the next part we want to really want to move into is the next Iron Banner and Faction Rally we introduced improvements into both of these areas which is kind it's it's a little bit vague but it's a little bit um it's a little bit of good news um, what what do you what do you what's your thought process there, Log? I, I mean, I think we're gonna see. Uh, I don't know. There's gonna be a, a change, right? Like, so this is you, you're talking the uniqueness of the rewards part, right? Like that that you're gonna get increased different gear. Fair enough. I don't. Know, I, I think it's good. I think it's probably just a movement in the direction the way it should be. I think a lot of the more interesting things when you really boil it down are the the coding that they're going to do around the gear that you get right like the protections they're planning to put in against getting double fucking exotic drops and things like that i think you know that that can really improve the game in a level that people won't immediately realize but over time it, it'll become like people won't be getting pissed off like i was when i literally got four exotic engrams and decoded them and got three vigilance wings and a fucking set of that whatever those purple titan arms are that i already had mm. anyway right like that that is a huge fucking source of salt but yeah the, the i think the the uniqueness of reward like there's not much in the um in that paragraph but i think when they talk about iron banner and faction rallies and increasing the uniqueness of rewards i think we're talking about no more well less reskins yeah i Mm. think that's probably a hint that when you get an iron banner weapon it's not a reskin of a gun we already have with a green wrapper on the top we're only Um, talking about this last week eh? (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, and when you go to Dead Orbit, it's not just what's the, the fucking Dead Orbit logo on yeah. the handle of the on revolver. On the old-fashioned. <laughs> on the old-fashioned. With a slightly different it, color. It's a Dead Orbit weapon. Yeah. It's something unique to Dead Orbit. And if you want it, you have to band together and join Dead Orbit and join the ranks of Dead Orbit and show your commitment to Dead Orbit. Do get something unique from Dead Orbit. I think the thing I that think they've that's not made enough of, of a of a like really strong link with is the factions with um like weapons manufacture houses. Like I know that you know that future war cult are tied in with kind of the, the quirky Omelon weapons and yeah, Dead yeah, Orbit yeah. have Vice and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, who's new monarchy these days? Probably Suros or something like that. I haven't honestly played, so I, c- I couldn't tell you, but I'm just, you know, like I, I think that it, it definitely, if they're going to go down that line and they're going to definitely have like really unique guns from each faction, then they can go all in on that kind of like, that is where you get your different production house weapons, right? Because, I mean, we yeah, sort of I see it was, smattered through the game, idea. but... I don't know. I mean, it depends how often you're really going to be able to get your hands on these things for factions because as it stands, you've got that one week a month, right, where it's, oh, it's the faction rallies on, we can actually get faction gear. And beyond that, Mm -hmm. it's nothing. Like, I, part of me wishes that it'd go back somewhat towards the Destiny 1 system of it's always there, it's something you can always grind because I like it. Like, I'll put it this way. If I was able to do that, I probably would have pledged allegiance to different factions at different points rather than just sort of, you know, like I've, I've pledged allegiance to really one, right? Like you'd, you'd go, I've got what I want out of this. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I like black sloth. Let's just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think unique unique weapons and armor pieces that correspond to the Iron Banner and the factions and w- yeah. or however they decide to deliver that, I think will obviously be the other side to it being successful or not. But I think they've acknowledged that it's not, you know worth, what the best, it's not worth the grind. 
You, you know what the best change from I'm, uh, in Iron Banner um, was for D1? Is when they went to those screwy Rise of Iron weapons that just looked completely different. They sounded like shit, but they looked completely different. Like, yeah, <laughs> like the one the, the Cryptic Dragon and all of that. Like, the yeah, cryptic, <laughs> cryptic Dragon. They were vastly different to someone. It's like someone took a piece of bloody um, steel pipe... <laughs> Whacked a fucking whacked a fucking side on it and a a bayonet and a and a, a firing group and just yeah. said fuck it here's your weapon let's go and I was like that's pretty cool yeah. I want to see some like I know that I know that we've touched on it and I know a lot of people have touched on it but I want to see some real dif- uh, different weapon. Would you like, like to see books. a grenade launcher that shoots out fucking spiders that track people? Why not? Fuck well, it. guess what, we're Swath? Australia. That's fucking happening. <laughs> it's in the trailer. <laughs> Would you like to see Red Death that is a fucking pistol? That is a hand cannon? Because you're going to say, well, that looks like we're going to see that too. Well, maybe we'll touch on yeah, that right yeah. at the end. But there's definitely yeah, yeah. so much scope to getting real weird with weapons, right? Like, we can, we can oh, go yeah. full tilt. It's fucking shoot, it's shooting people in space. We can do whatever we want, right? Exactly. Like All right, let's use... let's let's go on. Let's yeah. move on. We've, we're not even into like the actual when shit's coming part yet. <laughs> I'm just gonna get. You guys keep talking. I'm just gonna get some water because my mouth is parched. Well, that's what happens yeah. when you drink all the rum. Don't drink alcohol, kids. <laughs> Okay. All right, so well, the next part, we've, we've sort of touched on before where we're talking about protections in the game to stop you getting burnt by duplicate rewards, right? Like more more or seeing less of that fucking dirty duplicate six of the same exotic before you get the one that you really want happening. I think that needs to happen. So good. It's, it's, yeah, definitely. Um, well, look, wait, wait, here's, here's an interesting thing. Like, um... Exotics are in this weird place, right? The duplicates are really annoying, but you get heaps of exotic engrams. I don't know if you think that. Like, yeah, I think I, I, I think you in do. D one, exotics were rare, but it was very satisfying to decode them. In D two, exotics are prominent, and it's extremely not satisfying to decode them because they're most likely going to be a duplicate. Yeah. So, yep. uh, it. You know, and and exotics don't but still exotic. Uh, like I've never, and this I was gonna say this before with Zer. Like in D one, there was plenty of times where you, where Zer had so many cool exotics that he was selling that you had to make a decision where you'd spend your coins and be like, oh, I really want all of these. Whereas I, I have zero motivation to even go talk to Zer because I don't feel like he's got anything that I really need. I just um, I see the tweets come through like the the like sub cult is always good a good one like follow him and you get those kind of like oh Zer's here and and this is what he's selling and I have yet to come across one of those tweets where I've gone oh fuck I better go and get that like I yep. seriously haven't I haven't at all I, I feel no urgency about it where like you harken back to like Destiny One. And I went around to my brother-in-law's house to log on to his Xbox while he was away on holidays because there was shit that he wanted that he didn't have yet. So I had to go and buy yeah, yeah. it for him. Like, that's the yep. difference. There is no sort of passion about it. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that Zer is is kind of cool in Destiny 2 because he's out in the world. But that is really the the only cool thing that they did with him. Like, there's no... They didn't further him in any way. And, and I think I just think that the way that... He's just got shit that you don't really want for it with a currency that you've got shit loads of. It really takes the importance yeah, yeah. of him out, yeah. So there's some balance. There's some balancing there too. Yeah. Yep. Um. So and yeah, that ties into the next part of new ways to spend surplus currencies. Players will be able to spend tokens and legendary shards for vendor inventory. So we're gonna see rotating vendor inventories, much like Destiny One, where I don't know. If there's been any word on how frequently they'll rotate, I'm hoping it's weekly. Like that, that seems to be probably the the comfort zone for everyone um, to be able to go and you know, like oh, this week, you know, Shax has got whatever, and you can go and see him. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that's definitely going to add an element of like taking the punish of the grind out, and 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, part of me is like, well, because the guns themselves don't have random rolls anymore, that there isn't that like, oh, quick, you need to go to the, you know, Crucible Quartermaster now because he's selling a palindrome that's got a fucking unreal roll on it. It'll just be, oh, such and such mm. is selling this this week. Ultimately, I can't make a call on it until it's it's there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we, mi- we missed over weapon mods. Did we? We didn't talk about weapon mods, did we? No, we yes, definitely we haven't. Did. But was it in the list? I haven't talked about it. Sloth, did you have an internal you're, monologue about you're, it? You're a weapon mod. <laughs> you're a town. <laughs> anyway, I, think, I think I think we get more information on it in the in the parts we're about to go into anyway. Yeah. 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 So the thing that people have been screaming for in Destiny, and we've been needing it since D one, is a fucking emote wheel. We have you. You can you can equip all of your exotic emotes. All of your exotic emotes in uh, at the same time, which is just. I, do, I, I can't do, even be. Do, I can't do. even be constructive. I, I can't even be constructive with that. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. Like I can't even. Be, I can't even give any constructive criticism on that because. Yeah, it's one of those all things. It should have been done a long time done. ago, right? It should have been done a long time ago, and now they bring it in. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't. Yeah, I don't know why they bother. I don't know why they bothered yeah. mentioning it. I reckon that would have, that should have just been something that there was a surprise. But that well, would have been something that would have the been... the community just tore itself in fucking half and they threw everything into a single post that they possibly could. But anyway. Yeah. Right, now we're going to move into the part of uh, discussing sort of when things will actually drop, when you're going to be able to get your hands on things and some of the more detailed information around the changes that will be coming with Curse of Osiris and the week, well, the, the 12th of December, the week after it. So, um, so the reputation token. Sloth, do you want to blitz through this or do you want me to do it? We might take it in turns because it's a lot of points. Let's go. You take the, you take the, the, the next black point. Right. right um, on. on December 5th, coming to f- December 5th, ladies and gentlemen, changes affecting reputation tokens. Daily challenges will have reputation token awards increased across the board. Um, Cade's treasure chest still offer, still offer viable rewards, but now guarantee at minimum a payout of destination appropriate reputation tokens. Strikes will now drop a larger number of Vanguard reputation tokens, uh, which is quite good. It means there is a little bit more incentive to do some strikes. Um, common quality destination resource tokens will have their drop rates increased to 100% and values per token increased as well by 50% for common quality tokens and 250% for rare quality tokens. Uh, on the balance, uh, reputation required per engram will decrease for destination factions 30, uh, 37 plus 37% and the gunsmith plus 50% as well. And the, the Leviathan raid tokens will be redeemed at Benedict immediately upon obtaining a token instead of requiring a full clear before unlocking. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, tokens, tokens. Uh, the, the the fact that they've sort of they're trying to improve the economy, the economy rather, um, with tokens is uh, well, it's a it's a great first step in my eyes. A great first step from where where it is currently sitting. So, mm-hmm. well done, Bungie, on that respect. So if if you well, read the if you read the numbers with that, they're increasing token drop rates by a hundred percent, and only marginally increasing the vendor like the the amount of xp or tokens you'll need to turn in to get gear right so, so you should have so, more tokens and require less tokens of getting grams yes yeah well, so it'll requ- be more than now but required per ingram yep. um is 37 percent for destination factions like devrim and all that sort of thing and then plus 50 percent for um the gunsmith so hopefully Winky might be able to get his anti ope on Xbox. I don't want him to have it. Fuck him. Until I get June marches, no one's allowed to have anything good. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll jump straight to the next one. Uh, this one's near and dear to me because I love this sort of shit. Armor ornaments will be added to some existing armor sets for more visual customization without losing your shaders or mods. So we can... Uh, I think that's one of the things that was most frustrating about where D2 sits. It's kind of like if you want to look a particular way, you have to be willing to ride with the perks that come along with that armor. 
Um, the ornaments will be unlocked by completing objectives specific to each set, and they are permanently unlocked account-wide. Um, I'm kind of surprised by that. I was Even if it was just for that individual piece, I think people would have been happy with it. It would have given an uh, additional thing to do, depending on how hard it is, I guess. Um, they will be applied to the base pieces that you may have already collected and can uh, now unlock on vendors. If not, you are a maggot sloth. You are the <laughs> shittest bloke of all time. Hang on. I'm going to... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a photo of it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it up on phone. <laughs> this is the shit I have to deal with. Like, see, I'm trying to host a fucking semi-professional. <laughs> I'm gonna read it, but uh, uh, in season two, the uh, follow the following sets will have ornaments for their uh, unlock for their respective uh, activities: Vanguard faction armor, Dick Cock other phallus, <laughs> Crucible faction armor. Trials of the Nine Armor, Iron Banner Armor, Dead Orbit, Future War Cult, New Monarchy, and the Eater of Worlds Raid Lair Armor. So part of me read that and went, Lair. it's kind of bumming me out that we're not going to be able to go back and get ornaments for like straight Leviathan Raid, like the current Leviathan Raid, because I think they could have done some crazy shit with it. But hopefully, you know, this is a future revolution of it or whatever. Um, Matty, do you want to take the next one? The next uh, sure. So this point? this is still on the fifth of December. These are all the change. Yeah. Which, by the way, the the bungee posts just sprat like put them all over the place, right? They weren't in order. Oh, I put just, them in order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This has been put in. This is put put in order for for your listening pleasure. Yeah. So because when I read it, it, it just made me go. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was anyway. like the fifth, twelfth. So this is this is all still in the fifth of December. Okay, when Curse yeah. of Osiris comes out, uh, Banji has some updates on the weapon and armor mod front. Okay, so this is weapon mods for players wanting to clear some mod inventory space. Rare quality mods will dismantle into gunsmith materials and have a chance to produce legendary quality mod components. Okay, so dismantle rares, get materials. And a chance to get uh, that legendary, legendary le components, yeah. For players chasing specific legendary mods, including kinetic mods, uh, Banshee will offer a selection of specific legendary mods for direct purchase uh, with the selection that will rotate. Okay, this is going to be like the tweet. Banshee's, Banshee's got the kinetic mod, guys. Stock up. Stock <laughs> up. Get as many kinetic mods Burn as you can. Burn all of your legendary marks with Banshee this week. Make him a billionaire. Get, <laughs> get him. Um, and for players chasing a world legendary or looking for masterworks, Master Raul will sell some of his rumored horde of legendary engrams for legendary shards. So, okay, so like Master is going to sell engrams that could decrypt into masterworks or planetary legendaries maybe is that what they mean by world legendary like I an think io so. I think like an so. io helm or like a titan gauntlet that's the way i read it that's okay. a big deal when you think about it like if you've got enough legendary marks you can just go and buy a fuckload of them and hope pray to From sweet rng jesus that you get the the masterwork that you're after right I mean, it depends yeah. on, are we going to see restricted uh, pools for that or I don't know? I, don't, I mean, I, I can't see you. I, I imagine that Engram is, is literally to get masterworks, but they couldn't just make it a guarantee masterworks because that would make it too easy. So what they did is they just added in something else to the loop pool. But I imagine that that is your quick solution to getting a masterworks weapon through RNG. Right on, right on. All right, I'll take yeah, the next that's one. That's the fifth of December. Is, okay, so now we're on the twelfth. Yeah. See, on. this, this, this is this is what's weird. So on the fifth of December, you, Master Rahul's selling legendary engrams that can just crypt into Masterworks, but Masterworks are launched on the twelfth. <laughs> 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 so don't what? fucking think that you will go to him and get shit for the first seven days, right? Just stay the fuck away. Yeah. All right, so um, masterworks. Here we here we go. 
Uh, legendary weapons will drop or be upgraded to become masterwork versions. Masterworks will have few advantage over the baseline legendary weapons. They will track and display a number of kills with that weapon, with a choice between total count or crucible only count. I think that's a nifty little addition. Um, generate. They will generate orbs when generate orbs for you and your allies on multi-kills. Like, that has to be just PvP. Otherwise, it's going to be spammed, but I hope it's not. Um, add weapon stat bonuses that are randomly selected from a small pool of re-rollable, um, like, perks. Uh, masterworks drop from any source of legendary weapons for characters above 250 power. Unwanted masterworks can be dismantled into materials that can upgrade an existing legendary weapon into a masterwork. So it's not an endless grind. It, it's yet to be seen how many of them you need. I hope that the currency in that way is somewhat punishing. So it's a real decision for you to upgrade a particular weapon to a masterwork rather yeah. than just, oh, well, I've got all of this money. So I'll just burn it all and fucking upgrade any crap weapon. Um, raid and Trials of the Nine weapons will have a very high chance to be masterworks. I think that's a good, a good starting point for them. Um, though you will feel a bit mm. gypped if you get the normal version right. <laughs> You'd be like, uh, you gotta... <laughs> no, no, not only like, not only tokens into Benedict's to hopefully get just the stock, the stock <laughs> something. <guns. laughs> but then, rather than when you finally do stuff, rather than rather than get the masterworks, you get the you get the no, you know, the, the shitty normal. vanilla version. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have future plans to extend masterworks to other gear and expose your kill counts in more places. Um, fair enough. Like other gear, do you think that that means we're going to see masterwork armor? That's that can't really mean much else, right? Mm, maybe in the future, but uh, definitely not anytime soon. Yeah, I don't. Think definitely so. not anytime soon. I don't think so. Um, All right. Yeah, to, yeah, to it, other gear, yeah, it has to be armor. Maybe it's just masterwork sparrows. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, anyway. But you know what? You know what? The backlash from masterwork sparrows would, God damn. That'd be a thing. Anyway, beside the point. Um, so we've got uh, the armor ornaments coming up as well, um, 12th of December. Uh, faction armor weapons be unlocked for purchase legendary shards. Faction tokens on most faction vendors. All five armor slots will always be present and weapons will rotate weekly on factions that have them. Uh, all slots will be unlocked by claiming reward engrams from a respective faction and you can, you will get credit for engrams you may have already claimed since launch. So, also on the 12th of December, Zer. Hey, some new offerings, right? Uh, every week you'll be able to acquire one of the new fated engrams using legendary shards, which would decrypt as exotics that aren't already in your collection. Who would have thought that they can actually prevent duplicates? Can you believe it? You can buy an engram that won't give you the same shit. I am wow. sign me the fuck up. It's no. been in the system the whole time. No. Um, okay. A simpler three of coins that boost exotic drop rates from source for four hours. So, I mean, okay. 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 Let me get through this. I'm going to make some comments on this stuff. No obscure stacking mechanics to piss you off. <laughs> Need to reapply before every boss. So, it's just the way you use three coins. And the cost legend shards... Uh, you can buy them with the legendary shards. Okay, with the exotics, right? The exotics aren't you. I don't think the exotics are unique, and they're not as as powerful as they should be, and they don't have an exotic feel. And on top of that, you keep getting duplicates. So there might be a couple that you actually really want, but you never get them. Mm -hmm. What this is going to do is, I think that everyone is going to fill up their exotic collection very quickly you can just purchase these faded engrams with legendary shards but i mean i don't get why three of coins is coming back if there's a faded engram that gives you an exotic that's not in your collection i think three of coins is redundant three of coins was there because yeah, exotic I, engrams I agree with are you, man. 
in D1, exotic engrams were tough to get, and they were rewarding when you did get them and encouraged you to grind. And when you got them, they decrypted often to, you know, a new piece. And a lot of the a lot of the exotics in Destiny 1 were just fucking badass, man. They were cool. Um, and that was what was so rewarding about chasing exotics. I I feel like if they're trying to make exotics feel more powerful, making them easier to get is not a good way to do that. No. Uh, duplicates is different. I think there's a there's a difference between duplicating something. Like you've you've worked hard for that exotic engram. And I think it's okay for every now and then for it to be a duplicate. What's not okay is to do it like hand in four engrams and three of them to be duplicates. Yeah. That's not that's not rewarding. It's punishing, so, right? It takes the gloss off getting it at all. Like even now, like I'll get an exotic engram drop and there is like, I mean, especially with not having junies, every time there is that little fucking spark of hope that goes, this could be the junies but I'm probably just going to get shit on. <laughs> and like, I, got, I, it doesn't I don't feel know why it good. can't just be like, I just don't know why it can't be like, the more of one exotic that you've got, it just gradually scales the percentage chance of getting it. So yeah. like, okay, you, you get one exotic weapon and then you're 50% less likely to get that out of the exotic pool next time. And then you get it, and then you just happen to be unlucky and get it again. Okay, now it's 25% chance of getting out of it. And then now it's, the, yeah. you know, and it now really it's 15. Down. And then eventually, like, once you've got two, once you've got three duplicates, it's it's 0% chance you're going to get it again. Something like that. You know that. what? You know what? I, I, I want to take this, take this a step further with um, exotics. If you want exotics to be truly exotic, make the weapons a lot more powerful and then decrease the exotic engram drop rate mm-hmm. by 98%. <laughs> <laughs> I right. mean that. You are mean right. You are right. Maybe not that 98%, that they, but I get you. Get, put, I'm like, picking up what you're putting a down. A large amount. A large amount. Because, like, I was thinking about this and I saw Zach's tweet the other day and he's like, you remember when exotics were actually you actually got excited when you got an exotic engram because fuck like you haven't seen, like you, you, you've never seen one but it's like i get one nearly every every fucking public event every public event actually and it's 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 yeah i, I would love to see it drop substantially to greatly increase the weapons that or weapons or pieces of armor that we have I think I think the thing that yep. they're trying not to do with that is to dictate a meta based around exotic weapons, and I can understand that given that each weapon is kind of crafted into its own fucking spot. Having said that, you can totally play Destiny Two viably without an exotic, at least an exotic weapon equipped, right? And really, the perks on the exotic armor, like unless you play to the style that is explicitly dictated by the perks. Most of them don't do all that much either, so it's it, that I agree that they're not the power fucking play items that you have to have equipped. Like remember back when you were like we were playing trials and you're like that guy's got no exotic equipped. Oh my god, what an idiot! <laughs> like, mm-hmm. What is he doing? Mm-hmm. Now I could totally see you going to trials and not having an exotic equipped and do fine. Like, and not mattering. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I feel like Destiny's like going through adolescence, and they're trying to discover who they are, and they really just need to accept that for this, when this game was at its funnest, is when it wasn't balanced. Yeah, <laughs> when they right. were just, you know, like yeah. when when it wasn't taking itself so seriously, and it was like, yeah, you grind for that stupid, stupid weapon that just wiped the floor with everyone. But that's sort of what just made it fun, uh, and you know, I this idea of balancing destiny, I don't think is something that can. I, I now it's that I've seen them try dream, to do right? it, I don't think it can be achieved. I don't unless they, I, I, and everyone's always said this: if you want it to be balanced, separate your PVE from your PvP, okay, and and, and something like that. I don't know, but I I, I think the crux of like destiny 2 is trying to merge pvp into 
a shooter MMO like PVE. And it just doesn't work mm. because PVE is all about feeling powerful and getting gear and like just wrecking faults. And PvP, you want like a balanced competitive gameplay and they don't fit. They don't fit together. Yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement with that. I think ultimately there's always going to be a meta. Like even if the, the difference between the guns is minute, there will always be a meta. There will always be an advantage. There will always be a perceived perk. And that's like, especially now when they're saying, oh, there's guns that are really fucking good that people aren't even using. Often the meta isn't about what is effective. It is about what is perceived to be effective. And people yeah. just want to, like, if you go on the internet and everyone tells you, mate, if you use MITRE multi-tool, you'll fucking do heaps better. You're going to use it, right? Like, at least mm-hmm. if that's the way you're, you're geared, if you want to be competitive. I don't know. Anyway, look, let's get into the last of this, uh, the 12th of December releases. Commander Zavala and Lord Shax will sell gift consumables for legendary shards that can be used during strike and crucible matches that will serve the following functions. I found this really actually fucking cool. Grant bonus rewards to everyone in that activity upon completion, friend or foe alike, or award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in the match. It doesn't bode well given we were just saying it's probably too easy to get exotics already, but imagine you have a really good game of Crucible, right? And you're like, fuck yeah, I've got one of these things in my inventory. I'm going to shout everyone in the game this bonus, right? <laughs> like, and just hope for the best. Dude. It could just be tokens. It could just be cool shit. Who knows? I think it's a, it's a, it'd be a kind of cool thing to just be able to have that, you know, actual recognition of a good game. Like, I mean, yeah. is it's going to be it? raining. It's going to be raining exotics. Yeah. yeah, there's gonna be exotics coming out of your ears, man. Hallelujah. Well, I mean, de- de- depending depending on how many legendary shards you've got, because you know you look at someone like you and I, Matt. Well, sorry, correction, the three of us who have easily two thousand plus legendary shards. Um, it it all depends on how ma- how how much it costs. Because if we're if we're yeah, if we're um, going to be uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Just splurging. If you're going to of, put, yeah. yeah, if you're going to be splurging on this shit, like mm. everyone's going to get the exotic straight off the bat. And it, it, like you said, it just it just doesn't bode well for the exoticness of exotics. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Unless, mm. unless they like, you know, if they're going to, you know, it's a balance between exotic should be like exotic rare like they're rare to find and then they're good when you find them but it depends on also how much how many exotics do they introduce with curse of osiris do you know this yeah. wouldn't be as much of an issue if the exotic pool was massive either but then that sort of reduces what an exotic is like an exotic should be a rare few amount of items that are really good so mm. i don't know i think people yeah. are going to fill up the collections and exotics won't feel exotic and you maybe just do it to collect them yeah, it's it's just a collector's item because honestly, there there are some fucking there are some like good good exotics that I use in the raid all the time, um, i.e. the uh, skull fort for the titan, or the lunar faction legs for the warlock, or Orpheus rig, which I'm still yet to find, but I'll be using that in the in the raid when I get that on PlayStation. But um, weapons wise, there's not really any that outside of uh, merciless that I. have tend to use yeah it's just so it's literally just those those four exotics and that's it yeah you know like it, it not none of them have any other have any other sort of usage as far as i'm concerned but you know it is what it's it kinda, is it is what it is like yeah. i don't know you can part of me is like i understand where they were trying to head with exotics in that they're not meant hmm. to be that top tier not not that they're not meant to be they're, they're meant to just be more unique than like pinnacle pieces right like and then bringing in masterwork weapons now kind of indicates that that's the way they view it. Yeah, like the pinnacle of guns aren't exotics; they're masterworks now. Like that's that's the way it it is. Mm. I think I think like it's kind of cool in a way where they add guns. Like look at tractor cannon, right? It's the dumbest shit <laughs> ever, but it's fun as fuck and it's an exotic. Like it does a weird thing. If that was what all exotics were and that was the expectation around them fine 
Like, look at Syntheseps. You just, you can, like, hover, literally hover in the air and repeatedly punch fucking, like, enemies. Like, you never truly hit the ground. If that was the yeah, intention like, for them to just yeah. be weird, that's fine. But I think, some I, of them are I useful, they, some of them are yeah. garbage. And I think that's the line that they need to straddle a bit. I, I think the I think the weapons need to be, like, um, Cold Heart and Tractor Cannon. Like, completely different things that, that we don't... You know, you guys play Unruled. You've played Unruled Tournament, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Take any of those guns. Make them an exotic weapon. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Like, shoot shoot a ball of goo that explodes into goo everywhere and, like, slows players down whilst burning them. Like, you know, like, it, we're living in this space age with aliens and technology. Yeah, like, fucking shoot balls of... Om- Omelon has bloody liquid ammo make a water pistol i don't know <laughs> like, shoot, shoot waters i don't know <laughs> the ultimate insult insult in the trials game equipping the water pistol to go and, just, and then all it does is limit your vision <laughs> that's it <laughs> the annoying ah, I'm like, blind. Stop. I'm blind. Yeah, like, I, I think i think exotic swords did that for us in d1 and Gallahorn, you know did that too with this wolf pack rounds and um you know just i think the, the the exotics are an opportunity to be just sort of outrageous with what weapons you're using and to really fulfill that like we're in this weird space age sci-fi fantasy where it's a sci-fi it's a mix of sci-fi and fantasy we've got magic and we've got sci-fi yeah. like but the the magic is always missing from the weapons. But you've got warlocks that are like shooting balls of energy like a Dragon Ball Z character. I think, yeah, I think you're right. And I th- I'm hoping, look, looking at the, the teaser trailer for the stuff that they were going to prick tease, like in the stream that ended up being cancelled, where we've got that, I don't even know what it's called, the grenade launcher. I've read its name, I've just forgotten it. But it shoots and like literally... This hits the ground, and then there's this little like fucking scurrying spider that chases what is, I need to, what, a is this warlock seagull? around what the corner. This? Just it's on the that's fucking, exactly what that's exactly, it's exactly what, I want. what you're talking about. Like, and it just exactly literally chases a warlock around a corner, and then blows up under his feet and kills him. And I thought, a that's a win because it's a fucking one less warlock, right? But <laughs> but even better, it's just a weird gun. Maybe it won't be as powerful as they make it look. I mean, clearly it looks as OP as fuck, given it auto aims and tracks people. But like, maybe that's what the game needs, just to get a bit fucking silly. Like that, the tractor cannon montage. Who was it? Did it? Hush. <laughs> it was fucking unreal. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. It was unreal. Was really so if you've got, you know, like. I mean, maybe not the spider cannon, but the other thing that, I mean, and it was on the, the the front of the twab, the the red death pistol. God, I'm hoping that that's somewhat like the old Pulsey, man. Like, if, if we're going to get a gun that gives our health back, sign me the fuck up. I don't care how bad it is. <laughs> I, I just hope that... Oh, yeah, good... I'm, just, I'm literally just watching these spider... Oh, wow, these spiders. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. That's Let's get what weird, what right? That's what I'm talking about. Let's get weird, man. Let's get funky. <laughs> All right. Well, it's going to be the only grenade launcher that's ever good. Actually, oh. there's a couple that are actually good. Grenade launchers are not in a good spot, but there are a couple that are good. It's fair to say, play Matthew, the game. Stop it. Um, yeah. Just rounding out what's coming on December 12th. We got a bit sidetracked there. Uh, exploits, safeguards on chests, and resource nodes will be greatly relaxed. To, uh, so you encounter them less frequently. So you won't get the scale back if you try and fucking farm things, things like that. You know, cage chest giving you nothing because you picked up the second one too close to picking up the first one and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they're, they're winding that back greatly, which is a good start. Um, vendors will now beckon you to hand in reputation tokens only when you have enough to get a reward engram. Thank you very much. This is the most Thank annoying fucking thing you. in the game. I hate that. The amount of times I've gone to mm. fucking Devrim K and jumped all the way up that flight of platforming bullshit to get to him, to get there, and I'm like, I'm fucking two little tokens short. Shit. Platforming bullshit. It is literally hold, press and hold A, go up, land, you're there. It's two buttons, log, two buttons. 
Yes, I'm, it's I'm petty aware. that I'm bringing this up. But stop being so fucking lazy and calling it a platforming section. It's an annoying thing. My so God. Right? I don't want to have to see Sloane's face any more than is absolutely mandatory, right? I don't want to go there and check Sloane, who looks like the, the she's the ugliest woman in the world. <laughs> I'm just calling it. Oh, I fucking she's hate Tina Turner. Sloane. Leave her alone. I hate Man, she's not, I will not have you talk about Tina Turner in that way. Uh, she is I, Tina Turner. No. No. Anyway, we're getting off track. Yeah, we, we've, we've been going too really? long. We're well over an hour and a half. <laughs> look, look, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hosting the podcast and I started doing other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm editing, editing a video as we speak anyway. <laughs> he, he All right. Is. Well, what we'll, what we'll do is we'll find someone else to host into, but... Is there any closing comments, dudes? What, all right, what, what we might do, what part of what Bungie have spoken about over the last week are you most excited about? I think... Oh, oh, oh. that's right. When they mention they're going to improve the law and give a... Co- oh, wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I could oh, do hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to queue up the sad music, Matt. Hang on, hang on. If I could, if I could do the salty emote right now, <laughs> that, look, just for once, news. I would like the law. Whoa! <laughs> what did it say? News? <laughs> Holy fuck! I was expecting that to happen. Anyway, I go, would just some sad music. Uh, doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, I would fine. just I'll like the, law, music. the. Okay, I would like the law community to be acknowledged. They're always carrying the flame, the torch to to keep people excited about the story of Destiny and to fill in the gaps and to make quality content. And it's never about it. It's never like, hey, we've listened to the law community and we're adding a codex. Cool. No, it's not. Can we get some baby rages baby rage in the chat, please, guys, for Mylon? Can we get some baby rage in the chat? All right, so and in the YouTube you, comments, just type baby about? rage. What are you most excited mm. about? I'm excited for A, prestige stuff being fucking worth it. Obviously, I want to test that. <laughs> I want to. I want to see. I want to see some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stop fucking around. We've gone way too long, but yeah, I think prestige. Um, yeah, right. Prestige being worth it yeah, is the, a big the one. Prestige. The prestige. I'm pretty, pretty excited for. And Ed brings up a valid point in the chat. I, I, I love the fact that there's actually uh, not 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 in his words that they're actually talking. Yeah. But they I, I want to see I want to I, I'm so fucking excited to see that they're um a little bit more open. They're a little bit more open. At least with this blog post, they're a little bit more open. There's actually a, a semblance of a roadmap there, which is which is good to see. Which is really, really good to see Bungie. Really, really good to see Deej. Even though it was it was written by someone, I it, it looks like it was written by someone who was, well, it's a lot of spelling mistakes in it for an official release, right? Yes. Okay. I just I, I just remember I... sitting in Mylan's chat and Beard just losing his shit. <laughs> this was written by a dog. Yeah, anyway, I don't even go. know. Like, yeah, the the anyway. first thing is like, why didn't they do like the most logical thing? which is what Log did, is put things in chronological order. These are all the December 5th updates. These are all the December 12th updates. Why jump backwards and forwards? And the second thing that really peeved me. Okay, look, now now we're heading into negative territory. It's okay that's, as long as you aren't mean to anyone. But <laughs> okay. this, can, this is the advice, okay? doesn't matter what you're doing, what, what you're reading, before you put a picture in, you have to reference it. All right, so this is like writing a journal article, okay? If you imagine if, if – I don't know if you've read – how many journal articles you read, but probably not many, but at least some point in your education, you probably read an article somewhere. Never does a paragraph start with a graph, a picture, or something that you haven't referenced yet. Yeah. You know, when I was reading it, I was like – the master, the ma- it's like the title's masterworks. Then it's a picture of it, but you have no context to understanding what you are looking at because it hasn't said anything yet. That's right. I agree you have to say masterworks is being released, and you'll see a, a thing in your in the masterworks. See picture below, masterworks picture. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, it's been it's been good to close out the podcast with some solid nitpicking. It's it's been yeah, yeah right. <laughs> You know what? We don't have to be positive all the time. Just don't be a fucking dickhead. <laughs> and maybe don't nick, nitpick about where people place images in a fucking... <laughs> no, I agree. It was weird. Anyway, we are going to pay a visit to a dear friend, Chooky Wookie. He's a good bloke, so please stand by, go in and say g'day a lot, as we usually do. But until next time, Matt, do your fucking thing. Well... I would like to say the law will find you, but there's not much law left and there's not much more to find. Guys, thanks for watching. We've been the DDU. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Please enjoy the episode. Please enjoy your week, and we'll catch you next week for episode 57. Special guests incoming. Guys, thank you so much. Surprise. It's been good. It's an on. Peace. Anyway, spoiler alert. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.